You are invited to Ozark Full Gospel Church, located in Ozark, Missouri, where we are touching the Ozark with Jesus Christ. Sit back, enjoy, as Pastor James Aiken brings forth God's exciting word. God told me go, you gotta tell him. I sent my son to hang and die. He shed his precious blood in Calvary to bear my sin, give eternal life. I got a fire down in my bones. It's a fire of the Holy Ghost. Got to see a preacher shouting, going to tell the world about it. Got a fire down in my bones. Got to talk about Jesus in the city. Talk about Jesus in the countryside. Going to talk about Jesus early in the morning. Talk about Jesus in the evening time. I've got a fire down in my ball. Oh, it's a fire of the Holy Ghost. Got to see a preacher shouting. Gonna tell the world about it. Got a fire down in my bones. Jesus said, make sure you tell how much I love and care for them. I want to give up all of heaven, a body life that never ends. I got a fire down in my bones. Oh, it's a fire for the Holy Ghost. Gotta sing and preach and shout it. Gonna tell the world about it. Got a fire down in my bones. I got some good news I've got to tell you. Jesus said, I'm coming soon. All your heartache, oh, gone forever. A perfect life, a life brand new. I got a fire down in my bones. Oh, it's a fire of the Holy Ghost. Gotta sing it, preach it, shout it, tell the whole world about it. Got a fire down in my bones. Time is short to work the harvest. The night is coming, no man can work. The world is lost. It needs the gospel. His light to shine. The fire must burn. I got a fire down in my bones. Oh, it's a fire for the Holy Ghost. Gotta sing it, preach it, shout it. Tell the whole world about it. Got a fire down in my bones. Gotta talk about Jesus. Oh, in the city. Got to talk about Jesus in the countryside. Got to talk about Jesus early in the morning. Got to talk about Jesus in the evening time. I got a fire down in my bones. Oh, it's a fire of the Holy Ghost. Got to sing and preach and shout it. Tell the whole world about it. Got a fire down in my bones. Gotta sing it, preach it, shout it, tell the whole world about it. I got a fire down in my ball. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. At Ozark Full Gospel Church, we have four exciting services every week. Our service times are Sunday morning at 9.30 and 11 a.m., Sunday night at 6 p.m., and Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. There is meaningful praise and worship and powerful preaching at every service, and we never close for any reason. We look forward to seeing you soon right here where we are touching the Ozarks with Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus this morning. You know, the Bible talks about that we have redemption through Jesus' blood, the forgiveness of sins according to his grace. 
It talks about we have been, he made peace for us through the blood of Jesus. We've been made nigh by the blood of Jesus, and in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and we are complete in him. And I love that. Dad preached a message on that not too long ago, here a while back, about we are complete in him. Thank you, Jesus. In Calvary, in Calvary, marked with bone and suffering, bearing my shame, numbered for me. Jesus, you gave your all for me. There on the cross, your body crushed, bearing the wrath of God for us. There in my place, so out of place, the sacrifice, the sin was made. And I will sing unto you, Lord. I'm free and I'm complete because your blood was shed for me. There on the cross, your body crushed, bearing the wrath of God for us. There in my place, so out of place, the sacrifice for sin was made. I will sing and I will sing. your blood was shed for me there in the grave your body laid yet no corruption no decay and on that third and glorious day Jesus arose from the grave and I will sing to you Lord to you my voice and you are free and I'm complete because your blood was shed for me sing of the cross and blood he shed and how he rose from the dead the son of God handsome man been in skies been in chin I'm free and I'm complete because your blood was shed for me. I'll sing, yes, I will sing unto you, Lord, to you alone. I lift my voice in you. I'm free and I'm complete because your blood was shed for me. Because your blood. Was shed for me because because your blood was shed for me because your blood was shed for me because your blood was shed for me. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Did you write another song? That's good. Amen. <laughs> He comes across with some awful good music, amen, writes a song in the music. That's a good song, amen. That's, that's good, amen, praise the Lord. That'll go places, amen. Got some great singing, and I just appreciate him listening to the Spirit of God. And, and his songs are always packed full of Jesus. And I appreciate the singing, the writing, and, and uh, the Holy Ghost doing that through him. I know he couldn't do it on his own. It's the Holy Ghost. Amen. I want to go ahead and let our young people go to their classes. They look forward to going back there and praising God. And uh, I have a quite a different, unique, unusual message this morning. I want you to open up your Bibles with me, please, to Genesis chapter 25 and verse 21. Let's stand for the reading of God's Word, Genesis chapter 25 and verse 21 down to verse 23. If you found it, say amen. 
If you don't have your Bible, it is on the screen. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, and his wife is Rebekah, because she was barren, and the Lord entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to and inquired of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. I want to draw your attention to verse 22. And the children, these twins in the womb of Rebecca, struggled within her. I want to use for a subject this morning, God gives us Jesus for our struggles. You may be seated. Struggling is part of life. And when I read about Esau and Jacob, the two that were twins, that Rebekah gave birth to, and I looked at the fact that even in birth there was a struggle. Now, without going into biology, I don't want to go into detail because of the tediousy of it, but there was a million to one chance that you were conceived in your mother. There was a million to one chance that you came out like you came out because God is still on the throne. And here in this passage of Scripture, we find two babies that are striving, they're struggling. Isaac, Rebecca is barren, and Isaac goes to the Lord and asks the Lord to give her a child, and the Lord blessed her with two. And inside her womb was two, uh, God said two nations, God said two people. For within her was Esau and Jacob. And Esau was the firstborn. Jacob was the secondborn. I get tickled. I see twins sometimes. The oldest twin gets to sit in the front, and the other twin has to sit in the back seat when they go somewhere because one twin beat the other one by one minute. That's just the way it works. But the beautiful lesson here is that there's a struggle, and, and the struggle was so severe that Rebecca went to God and said, something's wrong. There is a lot of kicking, a lot of fist fighting, a lot of jumping, a lot of commotion, and I don't know what to do. Her belly was probably like a belly of jello, just bouncing around everywhere because Two boys were in conflict. Don't tell me that abortion's all right. John the Baptist praised God and leaped for joy before he was ever born of Elizabeth, his mother. Don't tell me abortion's all right when we know that John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb, and we know that these two boys wrestled and fought within the womb of their mother, Rebecca. And one out of a million chance you are what you are. God is still on the throne. Now life is a struggle. I understand that. In fact, the first verse of Job chapter 14 says, man that is born of woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Life is a struggle. There was a struggle even in the process of conception when you were conceived in your mother. There was a struggle. There was a struggle at birth. As your mother began to give birth, there was a struggle. As a baby, there was a struggle. We live in a day that babies are more in a struggle than any other time in history. But life is a struggle. In fact, this was so severe that Esau 
and Jacob when they were born. And of course, Esau was the hairy older one. Jacob was the one that out of him came the 12 tribes of Israel. And Rebekah asked God, what's wrong? And God said, there's two nations inside of you. And you think you were pregnant, ladies, when you give birth to a child. There was two nations in her. Boy, she must have really been big. But anyway, and, they, and there was two people, two groups of people in her. And Esau, and we see it today, Jacob is Israel. Jacob is the 12 tribes of Israel, the nation Israel. Esau is the Arabian nation, the Arabs. And Esau, because he sold his birthright, and Esau is a picture of the flesh. In fact, God even said that he hated Esau. Did that mean God hated an individual, Esau, as a baby? No, it meant that he hated those people that had rejected the promised Messiah. A nation, not a person. We need to remember that. When he's talking about Esau, if I hated, he's talking about a nation, not a person. And any nation that would promote, and in fact, they think that they have God, but they don't have God. The people of God, of course, is the church of Jesus Christ. We are the people of God. Uh, you say, but we're a Johnny come lately. No, we're a born again come lately. Amen? And I realized that the Arabian nations and those that even spun out of that Islam and different ones, they have a different name for God, which isn't our God at all. And they, they, uh, they revere Abraham and, and they revere Moses and they say Jesus was a great teacher, but their God teaches them to kill. Our God teaches us that our God died for us, that we don't have to kill anybody, that God came and died on the cross so that you and I would not have to shed our blood for redemption that Jesus died for us. Our God gives life, their God takes life. And so out of Esau came the fleshly nations of the world, of the Arabian nations, and out of Jacob came Israel. And out of Israel came the New Testament church when Jesus came to Israel and preached to the Jews, Israel. They rejected him, he turned to the Gentiles, and I'm looking at people in this room right now that you did not reject Jesus Christ. You're sitting in this room because you accepted and, and, and know that Jesus Christ is a true Messiah. That battle was so severe in the womb of Rebecca that when she gave birth to Esau, as Esau's coming out of her womb, the handmaiden noticed that there was a hand holding on to the foot, the heel of Esau. Jacob was trying to pull him back in. Jacob was a hold of the foot of Esau and they were holding on and he was trying, no, 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 you're not gonna get the first and, and of course Esau was first. But he sold his birthright. He rejected and went out for flesh and, and I'm not saying that Jacob was uh, the best. He was a deceiver. He was a, a person of trickery. But, I mean, oh, God gets a hold of people like that and he changes their life. Amen. If you're a plum wacko and out of your mind, good, good news. There's hope for you. Jesus can take care of wackos and out of mind people. Right? Come on, I'm preaching better than you're responding now. But uh, I want to talk a little bit about... Um, not so much about Esau and Jacob, their struggle, and of course we know that the struggle continues on even today. Two manner of people, God said, two, two nations, two manner of people. And how I many would agree that the Jews and the and the, um, the Jews and the uh, uh, other nations around are, even though they have uh, Abraham as their father, they're two different people. They're two natured people, two different natures of people. And um, we need to understand that, that God promised a promised seed uh, through Abraham, and of course uh, Isaac came, and the, that promised seed of Abraham, and, and um, 
And Isaac married, married Rebekah, and Rebekah brought forth another twins. And there is a split there where one is going to be the promised seed and the other one's going to be the seed of flesh. Now, you're either of the seed of flesh or you're of the promised seed. You're either, you're either a Gentile or you've been grafted into the true olive branch. Uh, the Jew, the Gentile, has been born again into the family of God. And Abraham now is my father. As a born-again child of God, I am a spiritual Jew. Listen to me. As a born-again child of God, Abraham is my father. I got there by the belief that faith in him and trust in him and putting my trust in Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ brought another. Notice he said there'll be two uh, natures of people. There'll be uh, two manners of people. And I may know that there is two manners of people. Even in America, there's two manners of people, those that love Christ and those that don't. Over there in Israel, there's the people of God. And, of course, I, I differ. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, hesitant, hesitant to call Israel the people of God because they're really not. You and I are the people of God, but they, you know what I mean. They were the nation that God chose to bring the Messiah. And Israel is the people of God, but they're blind right now. Blindness in part is to them. One day they'll, they'll be brought back to Jesus Christ. But until then, uh, you and I that are Gentiles being born again, we're having the time of our lives. And they may try to call me a Johnny come lately. No, I'm a born again come lately, and I'm blessed and, I, and I'm not of the world, and I thank God for it. But I, I, I have to go back to the struggle. The other night I was uh, preaching all night in my sleep. I just preached all night. Preached and preached and preached and preached. And I thought I preached the most eloquent, most powerful message that anyone could ever preach the first part of the night. The first part of the night, man, I thought, real, I was getting with it. Man, I was proud of myself. And then the last part of the night, the Spirit of God came on me and I preached and I was just preaching over and over again about the struggles of life. And God spoke to my heart and said, I want you to talk to the people about the struggles of life. Life is a struggle. But God gave us Jesus for our struggles. The reason the world is turning into drunks and drug addicts, the reason the world is going into chaos sexually and perversion is because they can't handle the struggles. And they've turned to other things to distract them from the pain that's in their heart. But Jesus Christ comes into our life so that we can face the struggles. And Job said, man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. And that, you don't have to read the book of Job to know that. You can just be alive on planet earth to know that. Esau being a picture of the flesh, Jacob being a picture of the spirit of God, the people of God. And now we want to be, the, the Bible says two men or people was in the womb of Rebekah. And uh, one was Jacob the people of God, and I want to say that there's two men or people in the world today. One is those that have Jesus Christ to help them through their struggles and those that don't believe in Jesus Christ and don't know Jesus Christ. By the way, that, that preaching that I was doing in my sleep was a regular little tent meeting. The, 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 the sheets were way up in the air, and I was having me a camp meeting. I don't know where Judy was. I think she got tired of listening to me and left. <laughs> no, she slept through the whole stinking sermon. But anyway, but uh, I do believe that God can speak to our hearts. And I believe there's people in this room that you're struggling. And your struggle is no indication that you're not a child of God. Lost people struggle, children of God struggle. Spiritual people struggle, carnal people struggle. Everybody struggles. No one in this room is immune from struggling. We all have struggles. And we all struggle. Some struggle to just make the ends meet at the end of the month to pay the bills and the, 
make a living. Some struggle at trying to make a living. Some struggle at trying to keep their head above water to just uh, live another weak to get on and, and make a way. Some struggle in their mind. Another struggle with their children. Some struggle in their family. Some struggle in their marriage. Some struggle in their guilt and their condemnation and the, uh, uh, that, co that, that guilty complex in their spirit. Some struggle uh, with their health and some struggle with the, where they live and some struggle with their duties and some struggle with other people and some struggle with being out in public and some struggle with, with just wanting to uh, 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 recluse into the shadows and, and, and leave God out of life. People struggle, people struggle. But I'm here to tell you, God has come and sent his son Jesus Christ to help us get through the struggles of life. And I'm so grateful that Jesus Christ is my Jacob, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Master. Jesus Christ is my Redeemer. He's my Savior. And I rejoice in the fact that God shows up and helps us think right. Amen. Amen. Man, let me tell you, if you're struggling and you're not thinking right, you're really struggling. And I wanna say point number one, God shows us what to think. You say, well, why does God show us what to think? Because we don't think right. And when I got born again, God showed me what to think. Hello? And I go to the Bible to figure out what to think, and I, and I want to focus on the things that are right. God shows us what to think. And let me point this out real quickly with a good scripture. Psalm 34, verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Psalm 40, verse 2 and 3, He brought me up, everybody say up, out of a horrible pit, out, everybody say out. He brought me up and out, out of the horrible pit, out of the mire clay, he set my feet upon the rock and he established my goings I, and put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Now here's what he's saying. God will change your vocabulary and God will give you a new song. Amen. God will give you a good report. If you're not getting a good report, just give one yourself. Go to the mirror and give yourself a good report. Amen. Amen? If you're getting bad reports, go to the mirror, look in the mirror, and if, and if you, you say, well, I'd rather not look at it, then fine, just give yourself a good report. Amen. Hello. Now, you're not the mind of God. How many know the mind of God is we win? I mean, you know, the mind of God is life. The mind of God is victory. The mind of God is positive. The mind of God is love. The mind of God is victory. The mind of God is, is sharing the good news that God is big and powerful and awesome. And he, and he picked me up and he brought me out and he set my feet on a solid rock and he established my going. He put a new song in my mouth. He straightened my heart up. He brought me up. He brought me out. He set me on a solid rock and he established Establish my going, set my feet walking straight, and put a new song in my mouth. No longer a song of doom and gloom, but a song of we have the victory. We have the victory in Christ Jesus. No longer a song of, of despair and gloom and agony is up, upon me, but a song of joy and victory that God is worthy and God is lovely and God is almighty. And I rejoice in the fact that God put a brand new mind in my heart, a brand new heart, a brand new mind. God give me a brand new life and give me a brand new voyage and journey. Here's what it says in Philippians chapter two, verse five. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Notice verse six, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. I heard a preacher preaching one time, and he said, see there, it means that we can claim everything Jesus was. He was preaching, see there, it says, uh, God being in the form of God, thought it, uh, Jesus being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, and the preacher was preaching about the fact that if we can have the mind of Jesus, then we'll just be like God ourselves. 
But wait a minute. It says, he being in the form of God first, that eliminates you and I. Who being in the form of God. Well, I don't know about you, but I've never been in the form of God. Anybody in this room ever been in the form of God? I've never been in the form of God. Now, someone said, well, that meant where Jesus said, God said, we'll make man after our own image, after our own likeness. Yeah, and we're so far removed from that. Don't even bring that up. Amen? So what kind of mind are we supposed to have? The Bible says that he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But notice the verse I read to you a while ago. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. You got to read the verses prior. And here's what it says about the mind of God, the mind of Jesus. Be humble. Care about other people. Don't be strifeful. Don't be unkind. But let the mind of Jesus Christ dwell in you. Let that mind of Jesus Christ be programmed and live in you. When you see a storm coming, what do you think about it? When you see a, a, a devastation all around you, what do you think about it? When it looks like you're going down and you're going under and there's no way out, what do you think about it? Well, I'll tell you what I think about it. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'll tell you what I think about it. Never a man spake like this man, Jesus Christ. I'll tell you what I think about the storm. God's bigger than the storm. I'll tell you what I think about the earthquakes and the mountains quaking and tumbling into the sea. God is awesome and incredible and nothing shall harm us. You say, what do you think about sickness and disease? I'll tell you what I think about it. Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior and there's nothing impossible with God Almighty. Just as Jesus healed the sick, just as Jesus Jesus raised the dead, just as Jesus conquered the storm, just as Jesus broke the winds and the powers that be coming against humanity. I stand up and shout with my mind strong, God, if God be for us, who can be against us? And I stand with my mind strong in Christ and say, nothing shall separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in my mind. Greater is he that is in my heart, greater is he that's in my spirit than he that is in the world. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Woo! I just once in a while, once in a while I just like to get up and flex Jesus muscles. Amen. It's about the only kind of workout I get, but anyway. We're talking about God giving us Jesus for our struggles. And we all struggle. God has overcome our fears in Christ. First John chapter 4, verse 18. There is, there is no fear in love. Everybody say no fear. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out all fear. But fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. And I thought about that, there is no fear in love. And I thought about how a child will trust its mother no matter what. I thought about a, a, a child, a small baby, will trust its parents no matter what. Those parents are not always what they mean to be. They're, sometimes they're evil and unkind. And I, let me tell you, anybody that hurt a child needs to be put into prison and locked away until Jesus does something with them. Amen? Anyone that would hurt a child. But, but I, I say this, perfect love cast out all fear. We need to love God so much. It doesn't make no difference what the doctor says. We need to love God so much. It makes no difference what the storms do. We need to love God so much. It makes no difference what the pain and the sorrows that come our way uh, 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 accumulate in our life. We need to love God so much that we don't have to worry when the storm hits. We don't have to be fearful and afraid because Jesus walks on the storm and Jesus is our Lord and nothing shall separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God has given us Jesus Christ for the struggles of our life. He's given us Jesus for what we think and how we face life and God has given us Jesus for overcoming our fears. 
2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, for God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I'm reminded of the story in Matthew 14, verse 27. Prior to that, verse 27, the Bible says that there was a great wind come upon the sea and the wind was contrary. And the disciples were having a hard time getting across. And it was night and they were so weary and they were so tired. And Jesus comes walking to them on the water. In Matthew 14, 27, but straightway, Jesus spake unto them. When they saw Jesus walking on the water, they were fearful, they were afraid. And Jesus Christ said unto them, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Now I want you to know, Jesus isn't always the one making the storm, but he'll always be the one conquering the storm. Jesus isn't always the one bringing the adversity or the trial or the struggle in our life, but he's always the one that'll stand up for you. He said, be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. Now does that mean that Jesus made the storm? No, it just means Jesus is there. Are you listening to me? No matter what you're facing today, Jesus is there. You just gotta have eyes to see him. No matter what darkness has enshrouded you today, you just gotta have ears to hear him. No matter what you're facing today, no matter what hard time you're wrestling with today, uh, uh, you, you, he's there. You just gotta have eyes to see, he's there. You just gotta have ears to hear, he's there. You just gotta have faith to know that God has not left us abandoned on this planet, spinning in the outer darkness on planet earth, alone without God. God's still God, and the earth is his footstool, and the heavens is his throne, and God knows what you're going through, and God loves you, and whatever you're struggling through, give God praise, give God glory, give God honor. No matter what you face in life, let God stand up in the midst of your debris right now. Let God stand up in the midst of your heartbreak right now. Let God stand up in the midst of, midst of your, your uh, devastation. Let God stand up in your mind. Let God stand up in your heart. Let God be true and every man a liar. Let God be your God and let Jesus be your Lord and your God. Yeah. yeah. And straightway Jesus Christ said, be of good cheer. That means shout it out. That means praise God. Yeah, we're all going through struggles. Because we're going through struggles, God has showed us what to think. Because we go through struggles, God has overcame our fears in Christ. See, it don't mean a whole lot when you think God's over the fears. It doesn't mean a whole lot when you think God's over everything. That doesn't mean a whole lot. But he made the universe. What are you saying, preacher? He made the Milky Way. He made the quasars. He made the universe. He made everything. That made the oceans and the valleys and the rivers. That don't mean a whole lot. God's bigger than your fear. That don't mean nothing. It means a lot when God came down and became one of us and walked among us and became one of us and went to the cross of Calvary and died a bloody death for our sin and rose again from the grave. And today he ever liveth as the Son of Man at the right hand of God. Almighty, it means a lot. Yeah, God just don't know what I'm going through. God just don't know the pain I'm going through. God doesn't care. Cares not that I perish. God doesn't know. Do you know how silly and ridiculous that sounds. He died on the cross. They sped on his face. He took every pain this planet Earth has ever had. He took every death this planet Earth has ever experienced. He took every sin this planet Earth has ever indulged in. He took every despair, every pain, every agony. He bore our sickness, our disease, our griefs and sorrows. He took it all. He died on the cross of Calvary. The whole world rejected him at that point, except for a handful of women and a few scattered disciples. And they tried 
tried to crucify him and they spit upon his face until he wanted to vomit. He who made the oceans and the rivers, they spit in his face and they ripped his hair and pulled his beard out from his face and they scourged him and stripped him and mocked him and drove nails in his hands and, and pierced his side and drove nails in his hands and his feet and ripped him apart and put him on an old rugged cross and there he bled and agonized on the cross of Calvary. Don't you ever say, God, don't you know? God, you don't know what I'm going through. Hush, hush, hush. God knows it all and he's felt it all for you and I. Struggles. Struggles. Because we have struggles, God has every one of our sins covered. Struggles. People struggle with their weakness, struggle with their sins, but God has every one of our sins covered. Psalm 32, verse 1 Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is it's covered. Jesus Christ said to a sick of palsy that was lowered down in a, a, from the roof into a room. There that man on a stretcher four men and brought him to Christ. And Jesus looked at that man, been sick of palsy for years, bedridden, couldn't go. And Jesus looked at him and said, son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. We're told in Romans chapter eight, verse one, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Listen, listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. Jesus Christ took our sin. And the Bible says, uh, blessed is the man whose sins and transgressions is covered there in Psalm 32 verse one. But that's an Old Testament statement. I said that's an Old Testament statement. Praise God, our sins are not just covered now. Our sins are obliterated by the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God our sins are not just put away somewhere and stored somewhere in a bag. Thank God our sins are not somewhere in the depthness of the sea. They don't even exist anymore. The blood of Jesus Christ has annihilated, blotted out, removed and washed away and conquered every sin of this planet. If you'll come to Jesus, your sins can be forgiven. If you'll come to Jesus, your sins can be removed. Let me share a scripture with you. Revelation chapter one, verse five. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, meaning he was the first that got up from the dead to live forever and the first to get up from the dead in a glorified body. And the prince of the kings of the earth and him that loved us. Jesus is the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Notice it says, unto him that washed us. That word wash means unto him that released us from our sin. He not only forgave us of our sin, but he released us from the power of that sin. Jesus Christ has released us and washed us and cleansed us and obliterated our past. We are now new creatures in Christ. Struggle we may, struggle must come, trials may come, persecution may come. We may struggle in this life, but I'm here to tell you, you'll never struggle without Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Yeah. Come on. Some of you are not saying amen, but I know I'm right anyway. You're wrong if you're not. Not only does he help us through our struggles, but God tells us our future is secure. I said God tells us our future is secure. I have insurance on my car. I have insurance on my house. I have health insurance on my physical being for doctors and hospitals. But I have assurance for my future. I have blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. I have assurance 
for my soul. I have assurance of heaven. Thank God my future is secure. May struggle. Listen to this, Psalm 34, verse 22. The Lord redeemeth, that means he purchases, that means he buys back, that means he redeemeth the soul of his servant. And none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Wow. Let me read that again. Some of you, I'm looking at you and you didn't get it. You're looking like you're a, a ball lost in high weeds right now. You just... The Lord redeemeth, purchase back, purchase it, buys, redeem. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants. And none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Isn't that good? Let me give you a New Testament word. John 16, 33, last verse of John 16. These things I've spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. And the world... In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus Christ said, in this world you'll have struggles. In this world you'll have trials. In this world you'll have pressures. In this world you'll have, you'll have disappointments. In this world you'll struggle. Just like Esau and Jacob struggled in the womb of their mother, Rebekah. In this world, there's nothing but struggles and nothing but hard times. The flesh will struggle against the spirit. The flesh will struggle against the promises of God. The flesh will struggle against the things of God. But Jesus Christ said, don't you mind that. He said, I've touched down on planet Earth. Don't you mind that. I've come from my Father and I've touched down on planet Earth. And in the world, ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And he did it on our behalf. Mm -mm -mm. If nobody's enjoying this this morning, I am. Even my sweat's getting goosebumps. Jesus bumps. Amen. John 10, 27 and 28. This was in our first service. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. The only thing the sheep did, there's only two things the sheep did. Actually there's three. The sheep heard the voice of Jesus. They knew him and they followed him. None of that qualifies the sheep to giving everlasting life. But Jesus gives everlasting life. I hear his voice. I know him. I follow him. Isn't that beautiful? So I want to say to everyone in this room, you're struggling. Put her there. Put her there. Me too. I don't remember it, but when I was conceived in my mother's womb, there was a struggle. A million to one chance I would come out the way I did. There was competition. I'm gonna go past that. I better blow past that. No, he's not, preacher. I'm saying that it's not by accident you're sitting in this building and it's not by accident who you are. Amen? Amen. Amen. We had struggle from the start. We have struggled through life. Every one of us struggles. But God said, let me help you through that. Let me give you Jesus to help you with your struggles. Let me give you Jesus to get you through your struggles. I, I don't blame you for having struggles. I have them. You have them. Everybody in this room has them. I don't blame you for having struggles. God doesn't blame you for having struggles. But I'll dead sure blame you if you don't let Jesus Christ in the middle of it. Because when we struggle in ourselves and don't include God in that, amen? I had a guy tell me a few 
months back. He said, I'd go to church. He said, in fact, I'm going to get back in church as soon as I get everything together. He told me that. He said, I'm going to come to church as soon as I get everything worked out and get everything together. I said, well, nice been knowing you. He said, what do you mean by that? I said, I'll never see you because you'll never get everything together. Amen? He said, you'll never get there. The reason we come together is because we're not together. Hello? The reason we come together is because we're not together. I hear people say all the time, well, you don't need to go to church. I do. I don't know about them. They may be a super saint. But I need each other. I need to come together with you. We need our input, amen, even if sometimes our input ought to be the output. But anyway, we, we, I'm thankful that we get together, amen? Come on. So I want to invite you today. Josh is going to come and bring us on. I want to invite you today. If you're struggling, it began even before you were conceived. And it will continue to the day you leave this planet. But allow Jesus to be in the midst. Have you ever noticed every time that every time someone was in trouble, Jesus was always in the middle? You ever notice that in the Bible? You ever notice he died in the middle? He didn't die on the right side or the left side, he died in the middle. Anybody ever notice that? Is it just me? His tomb was in the middle of a graveyard. He came out. He died in the middle of our mess and rose again from the grave. Is it just me? The disciples were in the upper room, doors shut, and he showed up in the middle of them. Amen? They used to be in economics or economics. They used to say, let's eliminate the middle man. Bad economics in the spirit. Don't ever eliminate the middle man because the middle man is Jesus Christ. He's the top man, he's the awesome man, he's the God man, but he's always in the middle. And he wants to be in your heart and in your life. Altars open, come. Stand with me, please. Altars open, you wanna come and talk to the Lord. Have you been struggling? Bring them struggles to the Lord. Pass me not a gentle say. Still, I'm headed for those early gates. There's a 
a glorious way, there's a glorious day when we will see. Jesus and all our loved ones that went before us. And Terry will be right there. In that glory land, that glory land, just a few more steps. Hi, I'm Pastor James Akins of the Ozark Full Gospel Church. And I'm Josh Akins, the Associate Pastor. And we would like to invite you to come out and be a part of some of our wonderful services. Our church is located at 3081 Selmar Road, right here in Ozark, Missouri. Every Sunday morning we have two services, one at 9.30 and the other at 11 o'clock. We also have Sunday night service at 6 o'clock and midweek service on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. All of our services last about an hour, and at every service you will expect to hear uh, dynamic gospel singing and powerful preaching out of the Word of God. We have something for all ages at every service, so we look forward to seeing you and your entire family here at Ozark Full Gospel Church. Where we're touching the Ozarks with Jesus Christ. If you missed any of today's broadcast, would like to watch it again, or maybe share it with your friends, you can do that easily by heading over to our YouTube channel. Simply go to www.youtube.com forward slash Ozark Full Gospel Church. You'll find today's broadcast as well as many other great messages. While you're there, be sure to click that red subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our latest videos. It's totally free and a great way to stay connected with us.